keratocavernous fistula. It's a very, very complex neurovascular disease. Generally, patients suffering from keratocavernous fistulas mostly go to an ophthalmologist because the symptoms of keratocavernous fistulas are sudden redness of one or both the eyes, diminishing vision or diplopia, that is double vision, or loss of vision and most characteristics in some of the keratocavernous fistula is a pulsatile proptosis that is like the patient's eye is bulging out and there is a pulsation that can be seen or can be felt uh, in those eyes that is called a pulsatile, pulsatile proptosis so keratocavernous fistula <clears throat> is a disease of neurovascular system but manifested through the eyes. Now, what is the basic uh, uh, pathophysiology of keratocavernous fistula? If you look at it, uh, basically the problem is to understand uh, the venous anatomy of the cerebral circulation. The brain drains its vein through two jugular uh, venous system and some of the central veins or the impure blood of the brain that are drained through a sinus called a cavernous sinus. Cavernous sinus is a pool of blood vessels. They are there in the center of the brain at the level of the skull base. And both the carotid artery which supplies the pure blood goes through this cavernous sinus. So this is like carotid artery and the cavernous sinus is almost all around it. And it is just a pool of blood vessel. So for whatever reason, if the carotid artery opens up into the cavernous sinus, then the pressure in the cavernous sinus goes up. That causes a keratico-cavernous fistula. Fistula is like a wrong opening between the carotid and the cavernous. That's why it is called keratico-cavernous fistula. So the carotid artery pressures are generally very high. The cavernous pressures are very low. Once the carotid artery opens into the cavernous sinus, the pressure in the cavernous sinus goes up the cavernous sinus is primarily responsible for draining the impure or the venous blood from both the eyes through superior ophthalmic vein. Now, once the cavernous sinus pressure goes up, the eyes cannot drain the impure blood through the superior ophthalmic vein into the cavernous sinus. And once the pressure goes higher up, instead of the venous drainage, the impure blood getting drained from the eye, the pure blood from the carotid enters into the eye and the, con the eye become congested. It is not able to drain the impure blood anymore. Hence, the patient present with proptosis, pulsatile proptosis, the vision comes down, the congestion in the eye keeps growing and uh, there could be actually the loss of the globe and loss of the vision. So today, we will see how to treat a carotico-cavernous fistula. Before understanding the treatment of the keratocavernous fistula, we should understand that there are four different types of keratocavernous fistula. The type A is the carotid artery directly opens into the cavernous sinus. This can happen because of a trauma, head injury, skull vest fracture, where the ICA directly tears and opens as a rent into the cavernous sinus. The number two is there are multiple meningeal branches which can open up into the cavernous sinus leading to a keratocavernous fistula. The type C where the external carotid artery meningeal branches open into the cavernous sinus increasing the cavernous sinus pressure causing a keratocavernous fistula that is type 3. And the type 4 could be a combination of ECA and ICA. So today we will tell you how to treat a type 4 keratocavernous fistula. We started with an angiogram of the cerebral circulation. This is the left common carotid artery angiogram, which is basically demonstrating that uh, there is a early opacification of the cavernous sinus, uh, and that is draining into uh, the facial vein and then going uh, into the internal jugular vein. So now what is happening is this cavernous sinus opacification is happening through the meningeal branch of the ICA as well as ECA. That is how we uh, diagnose it as a type 4 keratico-cavernous fistula. 
and clinically the patient is uh, having congestion and redness of both the eyes more pronounced on the right side having diplopia and uh, uh, loss of uh, significant vision on the right side this is the lateral angiogram of the left common carotid artery angiogram which is uh, showing the opacification early opacification is a cavernous sinus and this is the opacification of the superior ophthalmic vein and uh, this superior ophthalmic vein which was otherwise responsible for draining the eyes is now under tremendous pressure and uh, instead of the superior ophthalmic vein draining from the eye towards the cavernous sinus there is a reversal of flow where the cavernous sinus uh, pressure has gone up and the blood is being pushed into the superior ophthalmic vein that is the reason for uh, the patient having a proptosis and congestion this treatment modality for this uh, type 4 cavernous carotico cavernous fistula subconcern the treatment is always transvenous so what we plan to do in a transvenous embolization of this carotico cavernous fistula the first thing is that we take a catheter diagnostic catheter and keep in the arterial side so that when we do an angiogram we take the early phase of the uh, angiogram where there is opacification of the venous side and take it as a road map for us to proceed with the intervention and now we take another catheter from the venous side and we just try to go into the jugular sigmoid junction when there is a, a convexity post uh, the convexity is facing anteriorly and uh, once we have this diagnostic catheter preferably a vertebral artery catheter of five french pointing towards that we try to poke into uh, uh, this with the uh, acylon and uh, any foreign wire and we prefer acylon because we can just inject uh, coil as well as onyx both because it's a dmso compatible catheter and uh, here we are trying to go inside and try to go inside the cavernous sinus and you should completely occlude the cavernous sinus and sometimes the problem is uh, you don't have a intercavernous connection so if you want to embolize the right and left both then probably you have to go from right side as well as left side to embolize the cavernous sinus as in this case for us so as we see here now our diagnostic uh, five french vertebral artery catheter is over here and uh, the microcatheter has gone inside and we are trying to approach the other side of the cavernous sinus so that we can occlude uh, the the right side of the cavernous sinus and the come and occlude the left side of the cavernous sinus as well but we are facing some challenge here to get inside there so what we will do is we will embolize the ipsilateral left side of the cavernous sinus first come back and go from the right side and approach here and do the same so here we are trying to uh, embolize uh, the left side of the cavernous sinus with the uh, onyx and uh, we want a little more penetration so uh, we just hope that probably some amount of onyx can pass through the intercavernous connection and go to the other side but that didn't happen so we will embolize this left part of the cavernous sinus over here and come back and go to the right side and try to do coil and uh, onyx uh, together or either coil uh, or onyx we will see what best we can do there so now we will show you the uh, basically the how to cannulate the cavernous sinus sometimes it's very very challenging to go into a cavernous sinus like that and uh, here what we have done we have uh, done the same principle keeping a diagnostic catheter uh, looking convexly anteriorly and then try to poke inside the microcatheter wire and you can see our microcatheter is already there in the cavernous sinus and uh, if i can just show you the dsa picture which looks very very clear here so our microcatheter is here inside the cavernous sinus and uh, then we start using coils to occlude we can see the coil going and sitting exactly at the level of the cavernous sinus and we coil until we can actually exclude this fistula from the circulation there is still some feeling and uh, here we can see it very very clearly so this is the left part of the cavernous sinus this is the right part of the cavernous sinus completely occluded this is completely occluded uh, we will look at the angiogram at this point of time there is still some feeling so some more coils will go inside
so after deploying several coils into the cavernous sinus on the right side you can see that angiogram which is showing that there is a complete exclusion of the fistula on either side of the cavernous sinus and the cerebral parenchymogram is intact and doing fine and uh, basically here this angiogram demonstrates that the carotico-cavernous fistula is completely cured there is no opacification of the carotico cavernous fistula whatsoever and that is the end point that is where we just stop embolizing you can have a very clear look frame by frame so as the left carotico uh, the left common carotid artery injection is done so you see this cavernous sinus the left side and the right side embolized completely and we can have a non-subtracted view also which is showing that very nice embolic material in the cavernous sinus and completely excluded from the circulation.